So in this lecture, we're going to discuss the Hamilton's equations of motion. So, so far we had been talking about uh, how we had derived the equations of motion from the Lagla Lagrangian. Now we're going to talk about the Hamilton's equations of motion. So, this is a good place to start because in the last lecture, I had ended with an equation like this, right? So, I had ended with some equation like this. Are ended with some equation like this. So from this equation itself, this this equation we came to call as the Hamiltonian H, right? Or as the energy functional. So from this equation itself, you can read off that H is nothing but so so we have the Hamiltonian which will be a function of q's, p's and t's is nothing but q dot p minus l. So this is from straight from this equation. This is what we had said in the previous lecture. Now, what we're going to say is from this we can derive a equation of motion based on the Hamiltonian. So based on the Hamiltonian. So what we have now, this Lagrangian is of course a function of, remember it is a function of q's, q dot and t. Now dh can be written since dh h is a function of q's, p's and t's, it can be written as dh by dq. So just nothing but the partial, the chain rule of calculus, right? So this is the um, computing the total derivative using the chain rule of calculus using partial derivatives. So this is because h is a function of these three variables. Now based on this equation we can differentiate it partially with respect to the functions that are here and we can say now we can now this equation this equation if I differentiate I will get the total derivative here. Now to this first term, I will apply the, we will apply the UV rule here. So the total derivative of this term with respect to time just becomes U dot dp minus P dot dq partial derivative with respect to time of l multiplied by dt. So this is what we have. Now we can just compare these two equations right here. So we can compare these two equations. Now when we compare, we have to compare with respect to the uh, uh, differential term. So dq, the term that has dq here is compared with the term that has dq here. So therefore we get our first equation. So we forget, so here I'll box out the Hamilton's equation of motion. So comparing these two terms, we get minus P is equal to pH by dq. And Q, so I'm comparing this term, dp term and dp term here, and then I get Q is equal to and I compare the time uh, dt terms here and I get minus so these are called the Hamilton's equations of motion and we will see how to use them so here q is the generalized coordinate as I said the generalized coordinate can run from uh, they can they'll have a summation index by which we mean that they can run from q1, q2, q3 up to some qn's. So this q1 can be x, q, 
two can be y and q3 can be z and so on how many ever dimensions you want to take so for every every uh, generalized coordinate we'll write out a equation of motion so here these are the hamilton's equations of motion so this is what we have is This is what you have as Hamilton's equation of motion. And now what we'll see is th this actually came to be uh, important in the development of quantum mechanics. So if you not only learn quantum mechanics, but also learn about the history of its development, you will see how all these equations were actually used. The Hamilton equations and Hamilton Jacobi theory and all these things were actually used in the development of quantum mechanics. So now I would just like to uh, this Hamiltonian can be described as the uh, is the legendary trans the, there is it is going to be described as a legendary transformation of L. Okay, so I'll tell you what I mean by this in a more geometric in a more uh, uh, graphical sense. And uh, people who are studying physics, you know, more deeply at graduate level and higher levels, uh, you are. It is better that you go through some detailed literature about this. But what is meant by this legendary transformation? Okay, so what is meant by this legendary transformation? So the Hamiltonian can be actually be obtained by a legendary transformation, but what is meant by this legendary transformation? So if I have, let's say a function like this, have let's say a function like this now every point let's say okay let me take a function like this okay so let me take a function like this no, this is the given function. Okay, so this is a given function. So this is x, we call this x, and this is f of x, and this is y. So this is a f of x. So if you want to find out the legendary transformation of f of x, what we are essentially finding out is at every point here, let's say, wait, let us take a point here. Okay, let us call this point, say, let us call this point p okay let me call this point p okay so at this point so this point is x1 okay so this point is x1 now let me compute the so let me change this notation a little bit so at each point x1 at each point of x there is a unique tangent associated with so at each point of x there is a unique tangent associated with that point right so that tangent is what i'll call as p okay so that tangent is what i'm going to call as p so let me draw a tangent here right so this is the tangent at this point so this tangent intercepts the this tangent intercepts the negative y axis and that is the value of the legendary transform at that particular point Okay, so that is the la uh, value of the legendary transform at that particular point. So therefore, we go from here. So this, let me call it as g of p. Okay, so g of p. So we've started from f of x1. That is, this function now, this is the complete legendary transformation. So we've taken the value at an x, x at about any point uh, of the function, we've taken that point and we've evaluated the slope at that point and we've called it p and that slope intercepts the y-axis negative y-axis at one particular point so that is the legend or transformation of that uh, of that function so if you take let's take another point here where the slope is different x2 now again you can draw you can draw a tangent 
to describe the slope at this point and this will intercept at some other point so so this is p1 right so x1 goes to p1 so here again here at this point x2 let me call this point x2 so this goes through again the same set of transformations goes to p2 as we call it and this is the value at p2 so this is this is the negative intercept this is the legenda transform so for every point if you do this you will get the entire legenda transform of this function so when f of x now when f of x goes to e of p for every point on the function then it is the legenda transform okay so then it is the legenda transform okay so this is the legenda transform so this is what the legenda transform geometrically means now if of course if you are going to do more of physics i would advise you to do more reading on this in the literature because there are certain conditions for this legenda transform to be valid okay so uh, for, for every point you need a unique slope uh, only then you can have a unique legenda transformation right otherwise same po uh, many points will map onto the same point in this function of uh, in this transformation in this in this new function so uh, so that would make the uh, the uniqueness of the function would be lost in the transformation so uh, so all these conditions are there so so if you are going to do more of physics i would advise you to do uh, more reading on this topic okay so if you are going to do more of that you are requested to do more reading on this topic so this is uh, so just to recap we have derived the hamilton's equations of motion so this is what is most important that you remember and uh, we've told you that the hamiltonian is the can be obtained by the legenda transformation and given you a, a brief understanding of a geometrical understanding of what the legenda transformation does so uh, hope you like this video and found it useful now if you uh, continue to support us by subscribing to us in our to our channel okay thank you for watching